Good evening, everybody. Hal's Unicorn here once again, and tonight I'm going to do a uh, brief little blog about the current situation that uh, embattled Congressman Dennis Kucinich has found himself in. To set a little bit of perspective here, um, Dennis Kucinich has been a person that I've had a fair amount of respect for for a number of reasons, the chief one being his out-and-out -out honesty. He hasn't really been a very deceptive person. He's always pretty well stated where he stands, and um, some of his uh, stances are admirable. Um, he's been a pretty consistent ally of ours when it comes to holding uh, banking and financial institutions accountable and wanting an audit of the Federal Reserve Bank. Believe it or not, there is actually a small inkling of interest in having a stable currency over in the socialistic side of the spectrum, and this is something that I had hoped would be maintained. Out of all the people who supported the Audit the Fed bill, I think he was one of the few Democrats who actually genuinely supported it and wasn't just looking for a photo op and something to bring back to his constituents to solidify his hold on his district. However, on some other issues, uh, apart from my agreement with him on uh, financial institutions and on the military-industrial complex, um, he has some serious problems. When he first came into Congress, he came in with a blue-collar persona matched together with a somewhat uh, socially conservative uh, mindset. Uh, this included being a good pro-life Roman Catholic. This obviously went by the wayside when he started to dabble in presidential politics. And being somebody who is of the Catholic faith, although I am not in communion with Rome, and I doubt I ever will be until they recant on the heresy of Vatican I and the Council of Trent, Nevertheless, I expect all Roman Catholics to at least adhere to the accurate doctrines that they've managed to maintain, and one of these being the sanctity of life, and he has turned into all but a complete Judas goat on this issue, just the same way that Ted Kennedy did when uh, Roe v. Wade was first enacted back in the 70s. And it's difficult for me to fully support a politician that goes on and on and on about protecting the quality of the already living if he doesn't have the wherewithal and the intestinal fortitude to protect the most defenseless among us. And let's face it, there is no life that is more defenseless than the life which has not yet drawn breath from outside of the womb. There are many of you out there probably disagree with me on this and giving me this whole blah 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 about right to choose, right to choose. You know, Right to choose what? All right, let's 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 be real here for a second. Right to choose what? The right to occasionally have a medical procedure done if your life is in danger and you're pregnant? That accounts for less than 2% of abortions in America, and we have 50 million dead babies already by this procedure. That's more than what happened in the Holocaust, and I think pretty close to the same number of what happened in China. That's inexcusable. And, you know, even the rape and incest thing, which I have a hard time with, because why are you going to punish something that's innocent for something that another guilty party perpetuated? But even if I assume that, you know, let's assume that 2% it's for saving the life of the mother. The other 98%, the other 49 million dead babies, over what? So people can be irresponsible and not be held to account for it? So people can decide to do one thing one minute and then have a complete change of mind the next, regardless of who is impacted by it. The right to slowly subject this uh, country to cultural and uh, cultural suicide through population decreasing. I mean, this is something I cannot get past. And I know I have many libertarian friends subscribed to me who are pro-choice. But honestly, what is does this actually have to do with choice? It, it doesn't have anything to do with choice, and it has everything whatsoever to do with accountability. And a lot of people have this notion that you can just divorce choice completely from accountability, just like you can divorce cause from effect. It doesn't work that way. 
anyway, I'm digressing a little bit here, but uh, suffice to say, uh, Dennis Kucinich has found himself in trouble. He's uh, ahead by only four points uh, with his uh, Republican opponent in a smaller poll that was done a few days ago. I have the link to Real Clear Politics on this. And the thing is, is that the way they're projecting things right now, it looks like there's a possibility that Kucinich is going to lose his seat. Now, I have a hard time knowing what to feel about this, because on the one hand, I like the guy and I respect him, but at, on the other hand, he is so horribly wrong on so many issues that it's really hard for me to garner too much sympathy for the guy. The guy is a fellow promoter of the current culture of death that we have. He is an out-and-out, -out, unapologetic, uh, fiscal socialist. He supports completely na nationalizing the entire health care system, despite how, utter how much of a logistical nightmare that would be. I mean, it's one thing for a state to basically take over the entire health care uh, responsibilities for its own respective uh, population, so to speak. But for this government, this federal government, which has already dug deep into a hole of debt to just completely take over an entire industry, it's, it's – and the whole idea that we can maintain fiscal responsibility while doing this, it's, it's, it's a laugh fest. I don't support com fully nationalizing the health care uh, system. If individual states want to do it, uh, that's that's fine by me. That's their decision. I just don't want to live in a state that's going to do it because I want to have the ability to bargain with my own doctor uh, for the price of my of my care. I do currently carry health insurance, and thanks to Obama's really bad corporate sellout of a health care bill, my premiums have gone up by 30% already, and it looks like Aetna is going to up them another 25 or 30% as soon as this starts to get enacted. And, you know, I may seem like I'm doing pretty well economically, but, you know, I, I can't afford to be paying more than $250 a month on health insurance when I have all these other business expenses that I need to attend to. And I know everybody wants their free shit, and that's the why they support free health care. But you know something? If you're not paying for it, somebody else is. And I'm all for creating sa safety nets to take care of poor people. I'm fully in favor of shoring up Medicaid to make sure that people have access to health care and they have, a, have an ability to pay it back with some government assistance. I have no problem with that whatsoever, but what I have a huge problem with is the government taking over the entire industry itself. That's a completely different thing. And to all of you people out there who think that Europe has, a so, mu has a, so much of a better model, I challenge all of you to visit a European country and to see how things are actually done over there, or take a trip up to Canada and see the way they do health care up there. It's not free. You're paying for it, all right? You're either paying for it through taxes or you're paying for it directly to whatever doctor or provider you are dealing with. So anyway, I got a little bit off topic uh, with this. This was supposed to be a, a blog about Kucinich, but basically, long story short, I've gotten to the point where Kucinich is somebody that I can pretty much take or leave, and the only reason why I would be prone just to try to support him to keep him in office is because I don't know much about his opponent. If his opponent is someone who holds the same views that he does on the issues that I like and is also somebody who is pro-life and pro-liberty in economic terms, then I would, end up, I would support him and I would just dump Kucinich. But suffice to say, Kucinich is... You know, it's a half and half deal. I just, it's hard for me to be happy that he's losing his seat, and at the same time, it's hard for me to be un unhappy that he's lost his seat. So feel free to give me your thoughts on this. Um, quite frankly, I can go either way on this one, so I won't be hostile to any opinions, regardless of whether they're pro or con. With prudence to myself and benevolence to all of you, good evening.